Whether it's the cinematic universe or the regular one, one of the most common superpowers in Marvel is knowing stuff. There's a faculty worth of advanced degrees in just two of the Avengers, and another one is over a thousand years old and during that time has picked up a thing or two. One hero in particular has made a pointed practice of knowing stuff, so much so that when other heroes need to know a thing that they don't know, he's the one they go to. That person is, of course, Doctor Strange, the Sorcerer Supreme. The Doctor title isn't honorary. He was an accomplished surgeon. But since messing up his mitts and traveling the world trying to figure out how to undo the damage, he became a master of the mystical arts. Now he manages the energies between worlds to wield powerful magic to protect our reality from the realities he draws from. Strange learned the mystical arts the same way he learned the surgical arts, through extensive study and practice. To facilitate that kind of study, the sorcerers keep a library of books that both catalog the history of magic in this realm, but also a set of spells that allows someone to master those mystical arts. And one of the most powerful in their arsenal is the Book of Vishanti. It's like the joy of cooking, but for magic. Unlike the joy of cooking, its significance won't fade with the invention of the internet. That's because the Book of Vishanti isn't just a compendium of spells. It has powers all its own, and its own set of rules. You can't just have a tome of unimaginable magic power and let people do whatever they want with it. Well, you can, but that would be another book. This book is meant to be for good, so none of the spells in the book can be used offensively. No seeking revenge on your neighbors for dumping leaves in your yard by overrunning his kitchen with frogs. You'll just have to talk to them like a normal person. Like a Tolstoy novel seems to never end, the Book of Ashanti actually doesn't. Thanks to the magic of magic, there's always more pages to contain the secrets of the world and all the supernatural beings who like to muck about with our reality. And there are a lot of supernatural beings who have tried to muck about with the reality of the Marvel Universe. Not just purple aliens with strong chins and questionable plans. With the power of all that information, it's bound to attract some powerful folks looking to do some not nice things despite the whole rule about using the spells offensively. All that history and power is still useful, even if you can't use Sidorak's spell of invisibility. Yeah, that would be the same Sidorak whose gem makes Juggernaut so invincible, so you can understand how delicate these powers are. If the Sorcerer Supreme finds themselves in a situation where someone's using magic to get the Book of Vishanti, it can protect itself against magic. If you want to steal it, you'll have to steal it the good old-fashioned way. Or the new fashioned way, I guess, since the origins of the Book of Ashanti stretch back to the very formation of the Earth itself. That hasn't always been enough to save the book, though, as it has been stolen, recaptured, protected by a griffin, stolen anyway, re-recovered, and the griffin has been given a second chance. I mean, come on, it's a griffin. Like any of the magical, powerful items in the Sanctum Sanctorum, Doctor Strange doesn't just keep it around as reference material, but is also tasked with protecting it from falling into the wrong hands. With a nearly infinite number of defensive spells and a who's who of magical beings and doings in this reality, it's a pretty handy book to have. But who wrote this tome, and where did it come from? Well, the answer to the first question might sound a little familiar, as it's a name that's also associated with Doctor Strange's distinctive neckwear, the Eye of Agamotto. So who is this Agamotto exactly, and what does he have to do with the Vishanti? There are a lot of fingers in the pie that is Earth in the MCU. Celestials, as guardians, and even scrolls have all stepped in and tried to put their weird stamp on the direction of life on Earth, leaving it with a mishmash of pantheons, all usually ending up having a hand in creating a superhero or a supervillain and making things interesting for insurance salespeople who have to cover cars used as projectiles or people punched through walls. To make things even more complicated, all of this happens alongside the regular old sciencey stuff of the universe like Big Bangs and Primordial Oozes. Imagine having to have the world explained by some sort of hybrid Neil deGrasse Tyson and Neil Gaiman. Four months ago, on the cosmic calendar, or four billion years ago, the first of the super-powerful busybodies got to work shaping the Earth of the Marvel Universe. This time, from Earth itself. The very biome of Earth manifests into a sentient thing known as the Demiurge, who seeds parts of itself to create the first pantheon of Earth, the Elder Gods. Those were beings of nearly unlimited cosmic power, which you would think would be enough. Especially when you're the first big thing to exist. Well, if that's good enough for you, then you're not set. Set made the disturbing discovery that if he consumed one of his fellow Elder Gods, he would get their power too. 
Sooner or later, consuming your fellow elder gods became all the rage, like some sort of cosmic combination of Hungry Hungry Hippos and Highlander. But instead of that meaning that there can be only one, it turns out that consuming your fellow elder gods has a corrupting effect, which devolved the elder gods into demons. Which, once you've gone down the path of eating your fellow beings, seems like more of a lateral move. There was one elder god, though, that didn't get in on all the elder god eating, and that is Oshtur. Oshtur had the crazy notion that with all of the cosmic power and emerging universes, she'd take the godly version of a gap year and traipse across the universe to see what's out there. While doing that, she met a godlike being from another world that had died off named Hogoth that looks suspiciously like a tiger. Carol Baskin and Joe Exotic could not be reached for comment. The two headed off, teaching each other what they knew. Since Hoggoth was alone after his fellow gods had died off, he decided to join Oshter on the way home, where she had a lot of brother and sister gods waiting for her. Or so she thought. Oshter returned to an Earth that only had Set and Cathan left after the only other god not to get in on the god consuming, Gaia, joined with the Demiurge to create the Demigorge, who, well, aid all the demons, save Set and Cathan, who were left in exile. As the only three left, they all decided to not interfere with each other. This pact didn't extend to the emerging life forms on Earth, though, and Set and Cathan delighted in messing with these new Homo sapiens that were emerging. According to legend, Oshter saw some children playing and shed a single tear, which became Agamotto. This might not be the case, though, since Agamotto was active years earlier in 1 million BC as part of, wait for it, the Stone Age Avengers. But that's another story. However he came about, Agamotto became a powerful practitioner of magic, and teaming up with Oshter and Hoggoth as a workaround to not interfere with Set and Cathan. This power trio became known as the Vishanti. Agamotto shared his mom's fondness for the people of Earth, but that fondness was not unconditional. Humans, being human and all, would often disappoint Agamotto. Not being human himself, he had a hard time understanding them. Every time he tried to assign a protector, that power would corrupt the person holding it until he met someone named Genghis. Together, the two of them worked out a test that would help them select a defender that would become the Sorcerer Supreme, and the Order of Sorcerers came to be. When Agamotto wasn't creating one of his three eyes of Agamotto, he began writing down all the accumulated knowledge of the mystic universe and the assorted spells to help the Sorcerer Supreme in their job of protecting the Earth, initially from Set and Cathan and their minions, and then from the increasing threats that Earth began to attract over the millennium. Naturally, no good idea can go along without someone coming up with a bad idea version of it to go with it. Kavan got into the book writing practice himself, putting together what became known as the Darkhold. Unlike the Book of Ashanti, the Darkhold was written in haste, as Kathan was fleeing the Demigorge who was doing his whole eating all the Elder Gods gone bad. Before fleeing into exile, he left the book behind in the hopes that this would be a way for him to make his way back, should someone come across it. Unfortunately, it worked, as various people up to no good have managed to come across the Darkhold, using it to do everything from create the first vampires and werewolves. So, thanks for that. Gavon was eventually brought back through to the Earth by none other than Morgan Le Fay, who hoped to harness his power. Unlike any good attempt to harness the power of a ridiculously powerful being of unknowable strength, it went all bad, with Magnus eventually only being able to trap Cathan. Magnus trapped the book in a tomb, with an enchantment similar to the one on the Book of Vishanti, that prevented anyone who had bad intentions from approaching the book. The problem is, good intentions don't always work out, and the book got loose again. Over time, it's attracted numerous folks up to no good, including, of course, Dracula, because why not? Books like the Book of Vishanti and the Darkhold continue to influence the path of the humans even with the Vishanti not taking an active role in the development of humans, and beings like Set and Cathan mostly contained unless some goofball tries to release them and remain a key tool in either maintaining or destroying the reality of the Marvel Universe. With the multiverse threatening to collapse on the MCU, the Book of Vishanti is bound to become a key part of Doctor Strange's defense of his reality. Eh, <laughs> get it? Bound? Because it's a book, there's no spell to protect you from puns.